بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ہوپ یو آل فائن لیکچر فور گریڈ ٹین سبجیکٹ کیمسٹری چیپٹر نمبر تھرٹین دیٹ از بایو کیمسٹری دس از مائی ٹوینٹی فورتھ لیکچر اینڈ آئی ایم یور لیکچرر مسز سائرا جمال In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the first topic, self-assessment exercise 13.5. Question number one, how do DNA and RNA differ in structure? Number two, name the two kinds of nucleic acids. Number three is write differences between DNA and RNA. The first one is only on the basis of the structure and the second one is of both, like on the basis of structure as well as function. Number four is what is the sugar unit in DNA and uh, sugar unit in RNA? And number six, which nucleic acid is involved in protein synthesis? Let us move towards question number one. How do DNA and RNA differ in structure? So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and DNA exists in the form of two strands twisted around each other in a spiral form called a double helix. So DNA is made up of two strands and those two strands twist around each other and form a spiral structure. That spiral structure is called double helical structure. Each chain or each strand is made up of three components. Those three components are deoxyribose sugar, phosphate unit, and a nitrogen base. These three are the components of each strand and the strands are held together by hydrogen bond. The two strands which are at the opposite sides and they twisted around each other and then they are held together by a bond. That bond is called hydrogen bond. The order of these base pairs in a strand is a code which stores information which is used to produce proteins. The base pairs are in a specific order or in a specific pair. There is a specific pairing of the bases and that pair is very important because that pair actually uh, store uh, information and then that information is used to produce proteins by RNA. That is called genetic codes and these are important for specific proteins. Then ribonucleic acid, uh, RNA is the abbreviation. It exists in the form of single strand. It is made of a ribose sugar the differences between the DNA and RNA, the first one is that DNA is double helical structure while RNA is a single helical structure or it is made up of a single strand and it is made up of double strand. And the second difference is that uh, each strand is composed of deoxyribose sugar. But in RNA, ribose sugar is present. Deoxyribose sugar is present in DNA while ribose sugar is present in RNA, phosphate unit and nitrogen bases are same. Only one nitrogen base is different between DNA and RNA. That is instead of thiamine, uracil is present in RNA. RNA is synthesized by DNA to transmit the genetic information and RNA is responsible for directing synthesis of new protein. New protein is synthesized by RNA, but the information are given by DNA. You can see in this image, this is the structure of DNA, which is double strand. You can see there are double strand. This is the first strand and this is the second strand and they are twisted around each other. And while RNA is a single stranded structure, the nitrogenous bases, which I told you, are, um, are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine. These are the nitrogenous bases. But you can see that some of the nitrogenous bases are having two ring structures, and some of the nitrogenous bases have single ring structure. So 
So the single ring structures are thiamine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. They are same in uh, DNA and RNA. You can see guanine is present in DNA as well as in RNA. Adenine is present in both. Cytosine is present in both. The difference is only in uracil and thiamine. In DNA, thiamine is present. But in RNA, instead of thiamine, uracil is present. So these are the nitrogenous bases which are present in DNA and RNA. The three components which I told you are present in each strand of DNA and RNA are the phosphate unit. This is phosphate group or phosphate unit. Then this is the sugar, which is deoxyribose sugar in case of DNA and ribose sugar in case of RNA. And these are the nitrogenous bases. Nitrogenous bases are different. In this case, this double ring structure is of adenine, but nitrogenous bases are different. We have adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thiamine. But these three components are compulsory, phosphate group, sugar group, and nitrogenous bases. So sugar vary in DNA and RNA, that is deoxy ribose sugar in DNA and ribose sugar in RNA. Nitrogenous bases, I told you, they also vary. Uh, the other nitrogenous bases are same except uh, thiamine and uracil. So uh, the uh, double ring structure uh, nitrogenous bases, they have a common name. They are called purine bases. These nitrogenous bases which have double ring structures like adenine and guanine, they are called purine bases. While the single strand structures, uh, nitrogenous bases are called pyrimidine. So you can say that nitrogenous bases are of two types. Purine bases which have double ring structure and pyrimidine bases which have single ring structures. So adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine, these are the nitrogenous bases. Now, how they all these groups components are linked to each other in a stranded structure. So you can take it as a single strand, and this single strand is made up of phosphate group. Then nitrogenous base, you can see it is attached with this carbon atom. This is carbon number one two, three, four. At carbon number four, you can see this is carbon number five. At carbon number five, the phosphate group is attached. So you can say it five prime and means at the fifth carbon atom of the ribose sugar, a phosphate group is present. Then at, uh, this is one, two, three. At uh, carbon number three, you can see another phosphate group is present that is of another uh, nucleotide. So uh, this is composed of phosphate group, then ribose sugar, and at carbon number one, ribose sugar is attached with the nitrogenous base. That nitrogenous base may be adenine, that nitrogenous base may be guanine, that nitrogenous base may be cytosine, that nitrogenous base may be thiamine. So you can see nitrogenous bases are different, phosphate group and sugar units are same. This is, um, you can see at carbon number two, Hydrogen is present at the upper side and hydrogen is present at the lower side. There is no hydroxyl group. So this type of sugar is called, uh, this type of sugar is called deoxyribose sugar because no oxygen is present at carbon number two. But this one where one carbon number one, carbon number two, OH group is present. So this is called ribose sugar. Without OH group, without oxygen is deoxyribose sugar, which is present in DNA while in RNA, ribose sugar is present at carbon number two, the carbon has OH group. And the second difference is uh, in DNA, thiamine is present, while in RNA, uracil is present. So these two groups are, are different in DNA and RNA. The rest, group, the rest of the groups are same. One more thing uh, is, um, as I told you that, uh, uh, DNA is a double standard structure while RNA is a single standard structure. Uh, the, you can also write uh, in structure that uh, the uh, ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar are present and uh, in DNA uh, thiamine is present while in RNA uracil is present. 
so you can write three points for differences uh, question number four is what is the sugar unit in DNA I told you deoxyribose and RNA is ribose D means deoxyribose and R means ribose sugar which nucleic acid is involved in protein synthesis the ribonucleic acid is involved in protein synthesis you can see in this image ribose sugar has uh, OH group at carbon number two this is carbon number one, two, three, four, and the fifth carbon atom is out of this ring, pentose ring. Uh, so it is up. Uh, this is uh, carbon number two. At carbon number two, OH group is present in ribose sugar, while in deoxyribose sugar, only hydrogen is present. There is no OH group. So this is the main difference between deoxyribose sugar, which is present in DNA, and uh, ribose sugar, which is present in RNA. Science tidbit, chemistry in action, DNA fingerprinting. The variation in DNA of individual form the basis of a method for identify a person from sample of their hair, skin cells, or body fluid because DNA like fingerprints are unique for each individual. DNA of all the individual, they, uh, will, they uh, does not uh, same, remain same. The DNA of all the individual they are different and that's why we can use DNA test for the identification of an individual like if uh, parents want to identify their child so they can do the DNA test and then from the DNA test they can identify their children now one more thing is the fingerprinting like DNA is also uh, totally different of all the individuals so like for especially uh, these fingerprinting is used to identify the person because I told you the fingerprint they never remain same for different individual So from DNA of a fingerprinting you can easily identify a person for this only a tiny sample is needed the pattern is compared with the DNA of a Sample from non individual if the DNA fingerprints are identical It can be stated with a high degree of chemistry that the person are that these fingerprints are of the the same individual like we are uh, giving the fingerprints even at the airports so from our fingerprints which are uh, you can see feed in the computer the computer can easily identify our fingerprints and then uh, from our fingerprints all or uh, like uh, the um, uh, data it appeared on the computer screen so uh, fingerprinting, uh, fingerprinting is uh, or DNA fingerprinting is also uh, an important method which helps us in identifying a person. As you can see, DNA, uh, the fingerprints of an individual, which are totally different from each other. Coming toward the next topic, that is about the vitamins. So what are vitamins? Vitamins are organic compounds which are required by our bodies to prevent specific diseases but cannot be produced by our body. They are required for our, for our body but our body is unable to synthesize it. That's why we uh, must take vitamins in our food. Introduction of vitamins. In 1897, the Dutch scientist C. H. Mann discovered that polished rice lacked something found in the hull. Lack of something caused the disease very, very. A British scientist F. G. Hawking experimentally proved that, in addition to carbohydrates, fats, protein, and minerals, which are very important nutrients, uh, which are required by our body, although all these um, nutrients are present in rice, in polished rice, but still that uh, rice is causing a disease which is called berry berry. So the scientists they experimentally proved that uh, in addition to these nutrients, there is one more factor which is needed to sustain healthy growth. And in 1912, a Kastner Funk, a Polish biochemist, used the word vitamin. From Latin word vita meaning life, 
for these missing factors, he thought all these factors contain the amino group. However, the final E was dropped after it was found that all these factors are not amines or amines. So the generic name, these compounds become vitamins. Vitamins are accessory growth factors. Uh, like uh, the scientists were taught that these uh, groups are uh, amino group containing compounds or amino group containing compounds. That's why they gave the vitamins the name vitamin. Amine come from amine group. But later on, discovery showed that all these are not um, amines. Uh, they are different from amines, so they changed their name by dropping the E of the amine and we call it vitamin. Instead of calling it vitamin, they are called vitamins and they are very important for our growth. Types of vitamin, there are two important type, uh, types of vitamins, fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins, a vitamin that dissolves in fat is called fat soluble vitamin. And uh, examples are vitamin A, D, E, and K. You can remember these vitamins by DAC, D, A, K, E, DAC. DAC means vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K, and vitamin E. They are fat soluble vitamins. Harmful effect to use excess amount of these fat soluble vitamins. If you use excess um, uh, vitamin, uh, fat soluble vitamin, that what effect they will show on our body. So taking excess amounts of fat soluble vitamins may be harmful. For instance, large excess of vitamin A can cause dry skin, irritability, and feeling of pressure inside head. Too much vitamin D can cause pain in bones, hard deposits in joints, and kidneys, and weight loss. So, if we, although the deficiency of these vitamins also causes some diseases, but uh, those diseases are uh, very common. But the high intake of these vitamins, which are rare, but uh, they are also there are also some diseases which are caused by hypervitaminosis. Hypervitaminosis means if you take uh, these vitamins in excess. Although I told you it is very rare, but uh, the deficiency diseases are mostly common diseases. But what are the symptoms if you will take uh, excess of these uh, fat soluble vitamins? They may cause dry skin, irritability, and uh, feeling of pressure inside head. Uh, and that is about, that is for vitamin A, uh, like which causes uh, pigmentation and pressure inside our head and dry skin. Uh, vitamin D can cause pain in bones, uh, hard deposits in joints, also in kidneys and weight loss. While water soluble vitamins, a vitamin that dissolves in water is called water soluble vitamins. Examples are B and C, vitamin B, C. Vitamin B complex and C, it is called complex because we have different types of vitamins, vitamin B6, B12, and there are so many other complexes uh, or types of vitamin B. Uh, so that's why they are called vitamin B complex. Note, uh, if you will take uh, limited amount of these vitamins, so I told you they may cause deficiency diseases. But if you will take these water soluble vitamins in excess, they are not harmful for our body because they can easily dissolve in water and can excrete out from our body through urine. So uh, if you will take water soluble vitamin in excess, they are non-toxic. But if you will take uh, fat soluble vitamin in excess, so I too will really cause these problems. Society so technology and science, color, flavor, and fragrance. Some natural products are added in prepared foods to enhance color, flavor, and fragrances. Many of such substances are extracted from fruits and other plant materials. For instance, you heard about the vanilla, uh, banana, uh, banana oil, grape flavoring, almond flavoring, strawberry flavoring, pineapple flavoring, etc. Corn syrup is used in greatest amount as resins in many food preparations. So we can use these um, 
food uh, food extracts um, as a flavoring agent or as a fragrancing agent or as a coloring agent a number of natural products are also added to the food to prevent deficiency of diseases along with these flavoring agent tend to give color and fragrance to the food some natural uh, products are also added to the food to prevent uh, uh, our body from diseases uh, that is um, uh, vitamin c is uh, frequently added to fruit juices and uh, flavor drinks to prevent scurvy and uh, elimination of rickets to prevent our body from rickets and from uh, scurvy uh, the vitamin c is uh, frequently added in juices and other flavored drinks same like vitamin a is added to margarine to prevent uh, night blindness because deficiency of vitamin a causes night blindness and deficiency of vitamin c causes the uh, scurvy and uh, rickets although is caused by the deficiency of uh, vitamin d so these uh, agents of vitamins are added frequently added in fruit to prevent uh, the persons from these problems self assessment exercise 13.6 define vitamins uh, is vitamin c soluble in fat or water give examples of fat soluble vitamins so the first question define vitamin vitamins are specific organic compounds which are required by our body to prevent specific diseases but cannot be produced by our bodies they are very important for our body but the bo our body is unable to produce these vitamins so question number 2 is vitamin c soluble in fat or water for fat i told you have to learn that so that b a k e there is no c in it b c are water soluble vitamins give examples of fat soluble vitamins so that vitamin a d e and k are the fat soluble vitamins sources uses uh, and diseases uh, caused due to vitamin deficiency we have a table you can see vitamin a vitamin a is present in milk butter fish fish oil eggs fresh green vegetable and they are important for eyes and skin deficiency of vitamin a may cause night blindness a person may be unable to see at night then uh, its deficiency also causes dry skin dry skin is also a problem caused by deficiency of uh, vitamin a vitamin b i told you a group of several vitamin that's why it is called b complex it is a group of several vitamin but vitamin b6 b12 and so on so many vitamins are there they are present in whole meal bread uh, and rice yeast liver soya bean fresh green vegetable and they are important for energy production in cell also for nerves and uh, skin and the deficiency causes skin diseases also tongue inflammation anemia and bleeding gums these are the problems uh, caused by the deficiency of vitamin b complex vitamin c uh, present in oranges lemons tomatoes fresh green vegetables and they are important for blood vessels for gums healing uh, for gums for uh, healing wounds and preventing cold uh, like if someone have um, if someone has cold so the doctor prescribed them to eat more oranges because they composed of vitamin c and that vitamin c is good for good in cold Uh, and deficiency uh, causes scurvy scurvy is uh, skin disease also the gum disease you can see uh, the skin become dry uh, by the deficiency of uh, vitamin a and also vitamin c and uh, this is the bleeding gums you can see bleeding gum dry skin and scurvy which is uh, the skin become dry and pigmented vitamin d is present in milk butter eggs fish uh, fish oil and they are important for bones and teeth 
efficiency of vitamin D uh, in children's as well as kids and in grown up osteo malaria. Vitamin E is present in whole meal bread, rice, uh, eggs, butter, fresh green vegetables. It is used as an antioxidant and uh, it is in a deficiency causes hemolysis of red blood cells and sterility. And vitamin K is present in fresh green vegetables, the liver. Uh, important for clotting blood and efficiency may cause hemorrhage, which is delayed blood clotting. The blood does not, the blood of the patient does not stop. If it, uh, the, uh, if a person has suffered from uh, any accident, uh, so the blood will not uh, clot or stop easily, uh, and the blood will clot artificially. That is called hemorrhage. Uh, I told you that uh, vitamin D is important for bones. So this is, you can see the normal bone, which is straight, and uh, the curved bones uh, in case of the racket and osteomalacia. Racket is a problem in uh, kids and osteomalacia in grown. You can see the legs of a normal person and the curved uh, uh, bone bones of the leg in case of pregnancy. Hemolysis, hemolysis or hemolysis, I told you, this is a normal red blood cell, but uh, you can see that the rupturing of a red blood cell and the release of the contents of red blood cell will take place due to the deficiency of this white. That is the uh, vitamin E, which causes hemolysis of red blood cells and also called sterility. The science state bit some food lose their vitamin contents when they are cooked in uh, water and then drained. The water soluble vitamins will dissolve in water and will go down the drain with water for example rice pulses beans grams and peas if you will boil them you will cook them and then when you will drain them out so it will lose all its uh, vitamin water soluble vitamins and then eating that food is not good for like it, it, it is not giving us benefit so coming towards the exercise Select the correct answers and secures. Plants convert glucose into starch, lipids, proteins, or amino acids. So the correct answer is starch. Plants convert glucose into starch, while animals convert glucose into glycogen. So plants convert glucose into starch. Glucose is a tetrose, pentose, or disaccharide, or hexose. So glucose is composed of six carbon atoms. The formula is C6H12O6. So C6 means it is a six carbon containing compound. So it is a hexose. Hexose. Hex for six carbon atoms. Which is not a dextrose sugar. I told you a sugar which rotates the plane polarized light towards clockwise direction is called dextrorotatory and also called dextrose sugar. So glucose is a dextrose sugar, mannose, galactose are uh, dextrose sugar. They rotate the plane polarized light towards the right or in clockwise direction. But fructose is one of the monosaccharides which does not rotate the plane polarized right towards the right side or, or in clockwise direction. That's why it is not a dextrose sugar. This rotation depends upon actually the structure of compound. Then number four is retinose. Retinose, uh, which contains 18 carbon atoms, and um, uh, upon hydrolysis, it forms uh, dash simple sugar. How many simple sugar? If you remember, I told you that retinose, uh, that uh, one sugar unit consists of six carbon atoms. So three six are 18. It means that uh, three six are 18 means that. Uh, one retinose can give us three sugar units or three glucose units. So, correct answer is three sugar units. Number five, which is not a source of starch. Starch is a polysaccharide. 
and uh, wheat is carbohydrate, rice carbohydrate, uh, potato carbohydrate, but cotton is not a carbohydrate, uh, which is not a source of starch. Cotton is not a source of starch. Number six, which is not present in DNA. DNA is composed of deoxyribose sugar, phosphate group, and nitrogenous base. Ribose sugar is not present in DNA. Ribose sugar is present in RNA. Refinose is a dash. Refinose, again, the, I, which I told you that it, upon hydrolysis gave us a, a three sugar units or glucose units. So is it a monosaccharide? Monosaccharides are composed of only one sugar unit, like the C6 or less than six carbon atoms. Disaccharide, disaccharides are composed of only two carbon atoms. While uh, uh, two sugar units, sorry, so two sugar units that may be C12, not C18. C12, then that will disaccharide. But this one is C18. C18 means that it is a trisaccharide uh, tri because it upon hydrolysis refinose gave three sugar units so it is an uh, if you remember trisaccharide disaccharide tetra penta all are the subclasses of oligosaccharide so you will consider it as oligosaccharide because trisaccharide is not given in the option you will select oligosaccharide and uh, polysaccharide which contain uh, more than uh, 10 sugar units uh, then they are called polysaccharide but this contain uh, C6 are 18, 3 sugar units, so it is trisaccharide, and trisaccharide is a subclass of oligosaccharide. Coming to the short question answer, the first one is decide whether sucrose is a disaccharide or monosaccharide. Uh, I told you that sucrose, which is also called uh, table sugar or simple sugar, it is made up of uh, two sugar units, that is glucose and fructose, so it is a disaccharide. It is made up of glucose and fructose, so it is a disaccharide. Dextrose sugar or dextrose rotatory, I told you some monosaccharide molecules can rotate the plane of plane polarized light to right or in clockwise direction. They are called dextrose rotatory or dextrose sugar. Glucose, mannose, galactose are dextrose sugars. Question number four What is a peptide bond? Although uh, this topic is not in the syllabus, but in uh, reduced syllabus, they mentioned question number four, although we didn't read the protein. But as it is mentioned in the uh, reduced syllabus, maybe mistakenly they mentioned it, but I'm telling you the answer. Peptide bond. Peptide bond actually is present between two amino acids, and two amino acids combine together to form protein. So this linkage, which is called the uh, a carbonyl bond and this amine bond and H group when they link together uh, or when they join together two amino acid unit is called a peptide bond the resulting molecule is called a dipeptide because two amino group link together to each other so it is called dipeptide you can see the bond is this is the carbonyl group carbonyl group of one amino acid and NH group of second amino acid because the H of one amino acid and OH of the second amino acid, they eliminate out in the form of water or they release in the form of water. OH of one amino acid and H of the second amino acid will eliminate out in the form of water. You can see in the form of water. So this carbon double bond oxygen of uh, one amino acid and NH of the second amino acid, they will make bond with each other. You can see NH and C double bond O of one amino acid. They will link together and will make a bond. That bond is called peptide bond. This bond is called peptide bond. So by this way, as two amino acids are linked together, so the bond is called uh, peptide bond and the molecule is called dipeptide because two amino acids are linked together. Then question is, what is the function of DNA? DNA can store and uh, translate all the genetic information needed to build organism. For instance, in human being, the single fertilized egg cell carries information for making legs, hand, head, liver, heart, kidneys, etc. DNA is found primarily in the 
cell nucleus. We know that a cell is composed of different organelle. One of the organelle is nucleus, which is present in the center of the cell. That nucleus is composed of nucleolus, and then in nucleolus, uh, DNA is present, like chromosomes are present, and definitely chromosomes are composed of DNA. So uh, each cell or each fertilized egg contain uh, information for making legs, hand, head, liver, heart, kidneys of a newborn. The key to the ability of DNA to store genetic information and to pass it from one generation to another generation is a double strand structure. Actually, the double strand structure of DNA is responsible for this transmission. So, hope you understand this lecture. Inshallah, in next lecture, we will do the extended question answer. And uh, then also, we will start the next chapter. Uh, till then, take care. Allah.